This is a video about WAN 2.2 Animate and how, true to its name, it can help you have even more control over your animations than regular WAN. It's also a direct follow-up to my last video about WAN, so a lot of the stuff in that one also applies to this one. All the technical stuff is in the link in the description, including the workflow I'm using. So, WAN Animate is a bit different from regular WAN. In short, it's geared towards animation, which includes character consistency and motion referencing. Basically, it lets you specify a reference image and a reference video. The motion from the reference video will then be copied onto the reference image. Note that, just like the model's page says very clearly, this is meant to be used for characters. This means it will still do something with objects, but yeah, stick to characters. Now, while character replacement is one of its features, its more interesting feature and the main focus of this video is its ability to transfer motion to the reference image, especially because this can let you animate simply by sketching out very sketchy keyframes and using a detailed reference image of the character you want to animate. And watch as those sketchy keyframes turn into a much more completed animation that also follows the character's features very closely, practically perfectly in most cases. This alone can let you have all the control you want, as all you need to do is sketch out your main keyframes with the exact motion and poses you want and then have those keyframes be completed. Motion transfer also means you can pose a simple 3D model or even record or totally legally use third-party live-action footage to transfer their motion and also keep character consistency. You can see that in these examples. First, using a simple 3D model just posed around to make a couple of keyframes and then using those keyframes together with the reference image. You can see how the character moves practically exactly like how the model was posed and the character stays consistent. And this other example using public domain footage. Same thing here, you can see how the motion and even expressions were transferred to the character, practically as expected. Now this workflow should be relatively easy to use. Simply put your reference image in one layer, then your reference frames in their own animation layer, then select each in their specific dropdown. Then type the prompt that better describes the motion and action you want. Adjust some parameters like steps, change the sampler and scheduler to the one that you find gives you the best results, and wait for the result. However, just like regular WAN 2.2, this model and also this workflow have their own more specific quirks. The first one is a tip to avoid motion blur. You can do this by taking your keyframes and then duplicating them two or three times. This is because this workflow can't take into account the gaps, also known as hold frames, between each keyframe. This means, if you have, say, seven keyframes, then those keyframes will be processed as if they are one right after the other, also known as animating on ones, instead of spaced out, also known as animating on twos or threes and so on. This can cause motion blur simply due to the expected speed of the animation and also WAN in general preferring specific frame intervals and durations. Thus, why duplicating frames can help avoid this. Here, it's easier to explain this visually. Simply space out your keyframes, then duplicate those keyframes to fill in the gaps in between them, and also don't forget to duplicate the last frame too. You can also set a keyboard shortcut in Krita's options to speed up this process, and you can see these results. The first is using the keyframes as is, which leads to more motion blur while the second result is generally sharper due to using duplicated frames. Just like regular WAN 2.2, the frame interval seems to also be around 21 to 25 frames to avoid motion blur. So if you have less keyframes than those, just duplicate more until you reach 21 or 25 total frames. Another reason for this is also so you can pick and choose which resulting duplicate keyframes are the sharpest, so you can keep those and delete the rest. Then you can interpolate those much sharper keyframes and get better results. Hopefully this is noticeable through YouTube's compression. You can see how this keyframe is noticeably blurrier, it's usually the first keyframe out of its specific duplicate chain, then you can see how these other frames are noticeably sharper, though which one is the absolute best one is up to you to decide. This can also help with cleanup, because just like regular WAN and Diffusion in general, there will be inherent AI quirks that you'll probably want to take care of, just some good old draw refine should do the trick. And then you can interpolate those cleaned up keyframes using regular WAN 2.2 start frame and last frame for a smoother animation. See my past video about it, wink 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 arino. Another thing is in relation to face expressions. While the model is still very decent at transferring expressions, they can also be a bit trickier depending on how extreme those expressions are. You can see in this example. Trying to make this character make a creepy expression, it's not quite as creepy as the intended one from the reference motion keyframes. This is mostly because of the image reference itself, as it's still trying to stick very close to it, which honestly is still a good thing that it is this consistent. So in these cases, I would recommend having two, three or more image references depending on how extreme those expression changes you want are. Note that you can't use two or more image references at once. However, you can use one, generate a result, and then switch to the other image reference and process other frames with it. Here, I'm using the intended creepy face as a different reference. Then, instead of processing the entire video with the original reference, I'm only doing the second half with this second reference. With this workflow, you can simply select the keyframes you want, and only those selected ones will be processed. And thus, you can see this result is much more closer to the intended creepy expression compared to the first result. 
then you can simply combine the frames from both halves of the animation into a single timeline. Then you can also interpolate between both halves to make the transition between the two much more natural, or perhaps in this specific spoopy case, as unnatural as intended. And thus, here's the result. Another tip is regarding the reference frames, especially if they're too sketchy, and thus the motion isn't being picked up exactly as intended. In that case, I would recommend using those sketches with Scribble Control Net, or any other edge to tech control net like Line Art, Soft Edge, or even Canny. This should get you a much more clear result that hopefully should help out with motion detection. With this method, I would also recommend getting results that are close to the reference image, at least in overall features. Don't worry too much about the consistency of all the details of each result, as the reference image will take care of that. You can see this example. These input frames are pretty inconsistent in features and even style. However, the result was still pretty consistent, according to the reference image used. Also, don't worry too much about the pixel quality of the reference frames either. The reference image is what truly determines the pixel quality of the result, so just make sure that's as clean and detailed as possible, and also doesn't have AI jank. However, what does matter is the aspect ratio of the reference frames. If they're too stretched or squished, then the result will also be like that. Just keep that in mind. Lastly, at least for general tips that I can remember and totally didn't forget, and that also weren't mentioned in the last one video that also apply here, like overall consistency, AI quirks, and so on. You can practically use anything that looks like a character, or some kind of human person really, and thus that can be pose detected. The way the pose detection mostly works, is basically almost the same, if not the same, as the pose control net stickman. This means, you can also use a pose control net stickman, and pose that, and move it to make your keyframes. However, I didn't really get good results with it, at least from the single experiment that I did, it's possible you could still get better results. If you go with the stickman method, you could also maybe use those images directly with the WAN node itself, and get better results that way. But that's a bit more technical if you want to try editing the spaghetti, and it might not even work. Also lastly for real, this workflow is solely intended for motion transfer. This means, it won't do the type of character masking and replacement you might see in other one related videos and tutorials. I did initially manage to set up masking, however, while the results were good when it worked, they were really bad when they didn't. Mostly because I was using it wrong and it turns out you don't even need masking for my use case of motion transfer. But if you do want masking, the workflow is also in the link in the description. Not using masking means the background of your reference image will also be the background of the result, and any other elements in the reference image, aside from the character, will also do something. That something might also not be exactly what you want, since, again, the model mostly is really only intended for characters. That's not a big deal really, as you can simply make sure your reference image is how you want it to be. Also yes, characters plural, because the model does indeed work with more than one character, possibly up to a reasonable limit, but I only tested with two characters, as you can see in this example. Just make sure both characters, or possibly more, are in the same reference image. Keep in mind the dropdowns in the workflow point to layers, so anything in that specified layer will be processed. For that specific element, either a reference image layer or a reference frames layer. As in, if it's not contained in that specific layer, it won't be processed, even if it's visible on the canvas. Also, I'm not good at spaghetti, so at least with my workflow, it takes into account whatever is in the entire layer and not just what's visible on the canvas. Meaning, if the layer's content is much bigger than what's displayed, you might get an error. So just crop your layer beforehand. Also make sure neither of your reference layers have any transparent bits, so just make a layer below if needed, then fill it with a color that matches the background, and merge both. You could change the spaghetti so anything visible on the canvas is used as the reference image instead. But it might be more confusing, or it might be easier to understand. I'll try to provide a workflow like that in the link in the description. For the layers, I recommend naming them according to their use, so it's easier to locate them and select them. Keep in mind, Krita AI has a sort of bug that might or might not be as easy to solve, or might even be fixed by the time you watch this. If you have any layer selected and apply the resulting frames, that layer you selected will change name to the name of that result. This might throw you off, as your reference layers will be potentially renamed. To fix this, simply make a new layer, select that new layer, and then apply your result. Then you can delete that sacrificial empty layer. Hopefully this video has been useful in some way. By combining this method with the previous ones for image to video and frame interpolation, I believe you really can animate anything with practically full control really. Honestly, even more control than what I thought you could already have with the regular WAN 2.2 method. It's all in service of what you want to make, and how much precise control you want to have, and how much time you want to spend doing it, and also how much time you want to save doing it while still realizing your vision. Thanks for watching.